if you really want to look at this thing, this is what you find in the peer-reviewed scientific literature. You see that here on the bottom is sunspot activity, and there is no trend, certainly since 1960. And you see that other than, re uh, uh, other than normal climate variations, this is the global average temperature, and it is very well in line with increases in carbon dioxide, not with solar activity. Okay? So these are just two examples. And you really, really, the first takeaway message I want to leave you with is you can read anything you want to anywhere. But you really do yourself a disservice if you do not consult experts, okay? These are but two examples. I urge you to also go to notable, respectable, reputable expert sources. Put it this way. If for some reason you needed to find out something about brain surgery, you certainly wouldn't ask a nuclear engineering expert or an atmospheric science expert, would you? This is the same thing. You have the atmosphere system is just as complicated as human biology. So you really do have to be an expert to really understand what's going on. So, the global warming hypothesis is indeed being falsified, but not by the atmospheric scientists. It's a fact. Man's industrial civilization has grown to the point we, where we are influencing the climate on top of normal climate change. And so we've got to really make one of two choices. Either we can just do nothing about it, and that means we're making the choice to deal with whatever consequences there will be. Or we can maybe be a little proactive and maybe do something about it. That's something for the public discourse and public decision making. That's something we've got to decide. But don't fool yourself. Our regional modeling shows that, yes, even here at Tri-Cities, there will be impacts, and they will have economic impacts, as well as on just the weather. Thank you, Chuck. No worries. Just about perfectly on time. And I have one observation. Just that I thought Spokane and the Arctic temperatures were the same. I'm sure at certain times of year they are. <laughs> Our next speaker is Mike Fox. Mike has a doctorate in physical chemistry from the University of Washington. Worked in the nuclear industry for 37 years. For most of the past decade, Dr. Fox has been a consultant to both industry and government on, on energy-related issues. He was an invited speaker to the 2008 International Conference on Climate Change and Global Warming in New York, as well as having been invited to speak in Brazil and South Africa on the subject. He has written and lectured extensively on the subject. Ladies and gentlemen, Mike Fox. Thank you. Well, I hadn't expected the prior speaker to take a personal turn that it did. However, uh, given that, I would like to announce some things that I weren't going to mention. I have been to the last two global warming conferences in New York featuring the last couple of weeks uh, perhaps 700 experts from Norway and Sweden to Australia and to New Zealand and all points in between. 80 speakers from 14 countries. And so <laughs> Dr. Long's problem is not with me. It's from thousands of experts, hundreds who are present at New York, who are saying about the same thing that I will be saying. And just to keep it going along this line, you should also know that Al Gore and has been invited twice, last year and this year, and he hasn't shown. And we have even offered to pay his $200,000 speaker fee to show up. And he doesn't do this. This past year, we also invited Jim Hansen, the media's favorite expert on all aspects of global warming. Uh, to me, that says a lot, that they are incapable of coming before a room full of experts and explaining just why, for example, his movie is so flawed. Uh, 
I know Willie Soon personally that uh, he was criticizing, and at the speech he gave a couple of weeks ago, not only did he mention the Arctic air record, but he also mentioned similar findings in the United States, in China, and in Venezuela. This is not uh, limited to Arctic Ocean uh, temperature findings. <clears throat> he also mentioned that for the last 30 years that the temperature has been increasing globally. And that's exactly true. <clears throat> that's exa it's a wonderful case of selecting data to communicate a message. In about 1977, 78, was the end of a 30-year cold period. Some of you are old enough to remember the looming ice age, right? And uh, cooling trends. And some of the very same people who were expressing alarm about ice age coming, doom and gloom, starvation by the millions, some of these same people are involved in today's exaggerated stories of global warming, apparently without embarrassment. <clears throat> and so I have spec taken up some of my time to explain that, but am I running the controls here, Kirk? Or? You are, Mike, or I can, whichever you like. <laughs> How do we, uh, all right. I, I, I am not going to engage in details of uh, computer modeling because in a, in a group like this, it's extremely important to me that you understand the politics behind this because this politics contains within it the destruction of the United States and its energy production capabilities. This is an attack on fossil fuels and people from Olympia to Washington, D.C. to wherever the U.N. meets are, are making plans uh, <coughs> to, to harm the United States economy through energy shortages and emission limits and so forth. To, to start with the basics of science, I like to go back to Richard Feynman, my favorite Nobel physicist, and he points out the way we, science progresses, you make a hypothesis, then you go out into the field and make observations, measurements, and collect data. Then you bring it back in and you look at the data, look at your hypothesis, and if your hypothesis cannot explain the data, it's wrong. And it has to be changed or modified or dropped. As he says, it doesn't make any difference how beautiful your guess is, doesn't make any difference how smart you are, who made the guess, or what his name is. If it disagrees with experiment, it's wrong. That's a very simple rule, but it separates a lot of baloney from the non-baloney. Okay. <clears throat> Here, here's, here's a world expert on sea levels, Morner. IPC has changed the nature of science. IPC is the Intergovernmental Panel on Ch uh, Climate Change. It's, it's, a, it's a brainchild of a guy by the name of Maurice Strong, and I will get to that in a minute. The IPC has changed the nature of science. Once, once was observation, interpretation, and conclusion, much like Feynman's. Now, IPC is to is, is to climate change, uses computer models to prove models, and then go lobbying for the results of the computer models. This is not Mike Fogg speaking. <laughs> this is the world premier expert on sea level changes. So, computers and not climate measurements are e not evidence. Science is not consensus. Census is not, con science, not science. Computer models do not produce measurements as good and fast and big as they are. We have to look at the evidence. All right, the agenda for the United Nations. And I'm, I invited a guest here to speak, but she didn't make it. <clears throat> 